morning. It's a pleasure to be um, welcomed here to speak to all of you today at the um, QF Research Forum and to join my esteemed colleagues um, in, this, in this event. I would also like to thank all of my colleagues for presenting such an excellent overview of what's happening in the Qatar Research Forum and Education Forum. VCU began its relationship with the Qatar Foundation in 1998 under the name Shakab College of Design Arts, offering a BFA in graphic design, interior design, and fashion design to offer um, professional degrees for young women to enter into the local workforce. In 2002, the university formally began as a branch campus of VCU and initiated the transition to a full research and teaching university. In 2009, we expanded with a painting and printmaking program and the first Master of Fine Arts in Design program in the region. To date, we have approximately 270 alumni who are working in all sectors in Qatar and the region, and we are looking forward to our first male graduates this May and our first Master of Fine Art graduates in May of 2012. The VCU research focus centers on community. We therefore look to collaborate with colleagues engaged in bench research in order to integrate new knowledge into projects that will reach the community, with organizations also that are developing the cultural and the creative sectors within the country and the region. Our research investigations explore cultural pres preservation, creative inquiry, and problem solving. I was inspired last week by the general consensus among the attendees at the WISE conference that brought together 1,200 educators from 100 countries to Qatar, that education and research at its core is peace building. With the interconnectedness of our world, the need for us to share stories and solutions for the betterment of all is paramount. Relevance is the key to the research being done by students and faculty at VCU. Our overriding objective for our research process is to create a seamless connection between the student experience, the faculty experience, external collaborators, our, and our audiences. The title of my presentation is The Power of Design, and my main message is to emphasize our open call and our desire to connect the power of design thinking and the power of the design process with science, engineering, technology, and other research areas and at this time, I'd also like to share uh, a few of our examples of the research that sits purely within our liberal arts areas and our focus on cultural preservation and creative inquiry. A small group of our students along with faculty began investigating Arabic poetry and its relationship um, external, external to the Arab-speaking Arab, uh, region. They were supported by a QNRF Europe grant and the investigation resulted in a forthcoming publication that will be published in 2011 by Garnet Press entitled Gathering the Tide, an Anthology of Gulf Poetry. This publication is the first comprehensive collection of Arabian Gulf poetry that will be translated into English. The anthology represents more than 50 poets and 35 translators from all over the world, including several translations done by our students. The faculty also negotiated with the publisher to allow students to design the cover of the anthology emphasizing the importance of expressing the contents and cultural identity through the visual design. The need for this type of research is essential to share authentic stories across linguistic barriers. Sorry, it looks like I'm just missing, missing a page here. Anyways, this project um, that I'm showing now is a project supported by QNRF NPRP grant, and it's called the QIP, Qatar Index Unified Project. It will archive index materials located in Qatar, the UK, India, and Denmark, and it will provide a centralized index of Qatar's dispersed primary source materials in the areas of popular culture, literature, visual arts, and performing arts, 
social, cultural, and religious folklore, and other related areas. The research process brings together international collaborators that are experts in sociology and, and um, documenting materials, and also local ex experts from the Qatar Museums Authority and the Ministry of Culture to evaluate and identify 10,000 key items from within Qatar that will be included. With the goal to launch this repository in 2013, this will be Qatar's first digital repository of primary resource, resources built accordingly to international accepted open standards and structured for continual growth. The Hamid bin Khalifa Islamic Arts Symposium is an international forum organized by the Hamid bin Khalifa co-chairs under VCU Bloom and Blair, co-sponsored by VCU, VCU Qatar, and the Qatar Foundation to bring together international scholars on Islam Islamic art and culture. The 2007 symposium papers on water in Islamic art and culture are published by Yale University Press, and the 2009 publication focused on color is in production. The 2011 symposium will be held in Doha in November in collaboration with the Museum of Islamic Art, where speakers are invited to discuss specific objects in, collect in the collection. Setting the theme, gathering the experts, publishing the papers, this is essential to create new knowledge to support the wider study of Islamic art and culture. The creative inquiry at VCU Qatar results in original poetry, prose, and visual arts. Much of this inquiry is fed by the faculty and student experience of living, learning, working, and creating in Qatar. This example by our faculty member Diana Woodcock since 2004 relates to Qatar through the lens of cultural preservation, health and the environment, ecology and Islam, social aspects of sustainable development, and biodiversity. Her chapbook entitled In the Shade of the Sidra Tree was published last month. Her previous book, Mandela, was called in a series called Poets on Peace, again highlighting the peace, peacekeeping and peacemaking agenda. Other artistic inquiry by our faculty and students examine the concepts of nature as pattern, the Silk Road, food as eating in a cultural act, the Magellus as a cultural expression, the creation of national identity and memorabilia, visual expression to explore taboo issues, visual narratives exploring family history, daily processes, social issues, environments, and others. With the introduction of a painting and printmaking program, just this year, our sophomore students have entered it, we will witness an increase in visual critical exploration that represents the contemporary milieu of the region from the people of the region. The opening of the Arab Museum of Modern Art and other contemporary galleries will expand the opportunity to learn locally through the visual arts. And to the power of design. Nearly everything that surrounds us is given form by a designer from the shoes on our feet and the computers in our hands to our cars, buildings, cities, and not to mention the upcoming world-class football stadiums. Design shapes our lives and our world, but more than giving form to ideas, designers today are highly sought for the unique ability, ability to uncover needs, imagine solutions, and realize results. This is particularly critical because today's problems are complex and globally require a vast array of expertise. Design, designers understand this process and delight in unifying diverse teams to solve some of society's most pressing dilemmas. By acting as the glue that binds diverse disciplines, design research transforms the people, places, and processes in the world around us. An imperative for designers can be considered the quadruple bottom line. It's a framework that's um, presented to designers by the preeminent professional body for design in the United States, the AIGA and has since been adopted by international design associations. The framework is called the Living Principles for Design and advocates for all designers, business leaders, and educators to use sustain sustainability of the economy, the environment, people, and culture to guide every decision. This framework parallels the Qatar 2030 national vision pillars of people, society, environment, and economy and places these pillars at the heart of the design process. At VCU, we create projects that are linked to real world needs, issues, and problems. This has been done, been done repeatedly in collaboration with local public, private organizations in our annual design competitions, 
through our six previous international design conferences in which we bring together diverse thinkers to the university, not only to present ideas, but also to be in workshops with our students. Through these experiences, students and faculty have developed solutions for cross-cultural approaches to communication, urban wayfinding systems, reuse of discarded materials, and the betterment of living conditions, to name but a few. Our upcoming Tasmim Doha 2011 conference called Synapse emphasizes the designer as the link between diverse disciplines. For this conference, students have been investigating needs in Qatar and have developed themes for the workshops at the conference. One theme is entitled Stratified Societies, to discover the needs of culturally diverse future generation in Qatar. The second is health and well-being, to look at the Qatar society where design can support approaches to health and wellness, including delivery of systems and environments, campaigns to promote health and wellness, mapping audiences and understanding population needs, and designing uniforms and service garments. The third workshop is called Managing Life in a Construction Zone to develop ideas that mitigate the impact of rapid development on communities, creating new ways of disseminating information to complex audiences and creating buy-in from populations by understanding the audience. To this, I would like to invite anyone who would like to be involved and participate in these workshops. Finally, to highlight the design process and the importance of cross-disciplinary boundaries, I will introduce a project that began at one of our Tasmim Doha conferences in a student workshop. The focus of the conference was sustainability with the keynote speaker, David Suzuki, who inspired the students to look deeply at their surroundings with the direction to investigate migrant worker lives. The students developed concepts to create improved living and working conditions, including backpacks with portable beds, purpose-designed uniforms, bus shelters, street lighting, new housing. Her Highness Sheikh Amoza bin Nasser supported the student ideas and directed funding for the development of the migrant housing worker concept. From this, a relationship with QSTP and VCU through a proof of concept grant brought the project into the VCU Research Center. In a close collaboration with QSTP, architects, Texas A&M engineers, energy consultants, sociologists, our alumni and students, and the QSTP Entrepreneurship Program, this project is entering the prototype phase in February. With an analysis of the economic viability of the project and the creation of a business plan by the QSTP entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship team and sourcing local manufacturers to create the housing, the project has the prospect to become a highly successful local and regional business venture and make Qatar a leader in the region as a just and caring society. The design process included an intensive workshop with the United Nations Relief and Works Agency due to the recognition that this type of innovation could be adapted to provide traditional housing for people in, air, in Gaza and other areas in crisis. The outcomes from this project achieve the quadruple bottom line and the fluid integration of the 2030 pillars by treating people with dignity and respect, building human capacity, integrating sustainable energy systems and design for reuse, and developing an economically viable business model, including local production. Again, I'd like to thank the Qatar Foundation for this opportunity to share some examples of the research at VCU Qatar, and I welcome uh, all collaborators to help us envision a better future. Thank you.